Hi guys, uh, my name is Justin Rees, I'm a professional wrestler, uh, done a bit of bodybuilding, a bit of other stuff in the gym as well, but more importantly this is bench pressing questions. Now you're probably asking yourself what is bench pressing questions, so basically each week I'm going to bring you an interview and a training session with a wrestler or a different person of interest, celebrity. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to drink a pre-workout, in the time that that goes down we're going to have a bit of a chat, I'm going to try and get some, uh, get some answers from the guests about their life and um, experiences. We're then going to hit the gym, but before that we're going to flip a coin to see who is going to lead the session and then you'll get some, uh, some nice bits of us training and going from there. So without further ado, my guest today is the IWGP Heavyweight Champion, Will Ospreay. What's up man, how are you doing? You not, not too bad Will, not too bad. So, Will, we'll jump straight in. From the backyard to the Tokyo Dome, give us a quick rundown of wrestling, your career, and how you got to be the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. But first, let's get in. So today, pre-workout is Fruit Punch, gold standard pre-workout by Optimum Nutrition. Thanks for watching Ben's Pressing Questions. Throughout the entire series, myself and the guests will be using products from Optimum Nutrition. If you want to receive 20% off your entire order at OptimumNutrition.com, please use my code REES20 at checkout. Secondly, please like and share this video. Subscribe to my channel and comment below with anyone you'd like to see me interview and train with in the future. Thanks for watching. Give it a little shake. Oh, get it. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Cool. Ryan and Will. Heads or tails? Tails. Heads. <laughs> so, don't look too scared. This isn't going to be a, a, a super, super heavy session. So we're going to go to the gym. We're going to train legs. <laughs> but it's going to be a volume session. So we're going to put in lots and lots of reps. We're going to look to get a bit of... Bit of, bit of blood flowing through the legs and go from there. So we're not gonna, I'm not gonna kill you, we're not gonna be squatting 300 kg, Thank God. but we are gonna be training legs. school quite a lot and especially on the, the streets especially of Essex and uh, they bought me a wrestling ring to put as, in my as, garden. As what parents that you know. My mum's a, <laughs> my mum's a fabricator, not a uh, drama producer and she knew a fabricator who yeah. would make her stage and stuff like that so she got somebody to make a wrestling Fantastic. ring. Fantastic. And then every day after school all my friends would just come round and would film little videos and put them on YouTube and uh, Greg Burridge, who uh, I think you guys have heard Yeah, I know, I know Greg really well, yeah. Uh, he saw my videos, invited me down to the London School of Lucha Libre, 
with uh, him and Gary by uh, my side, I was able to get onto the UK indie scene. We've uh, worked each other in places like FPW yeah. and uh, IPW, done stuff like that. Uh, and then I was on. I was lucky enough to go to Progress and um, and uh, more importantly for me, Rev Pro. Uh, I found my way uh, to the top of the British scene quite quickly at the early age of like. 21 something yeah you're a real whippersnapper you made yeah. me feel ancient before, uh, <laughs> before we even got ancient um i don't, I don't know what it is i think i, was just, <laughs> I think where the kind of guys like puck left uh, they needed a high flyer as a comp competition between me yeah. and mark andrews and i could just do more stuff and everyone was just like oh go on then so then it was like we took that to pwg you took it to evolve and then just out of nowhere just that uh, i got in the ring with okada in a uh a uk show with rev pro and it was lucky enough that that was kind of the doorway of me coming into Japan. I was a junior heavyweight, and uh, I'm not ashamed to say it, but I was the uh, worst in shape junior heavyweight <laughs> champion of all time. Uh, I started um, looking at how to change my body in 2018. Yeah, I was trying to put on some mass, and uh, it, it started working, but I never really understood my diet. I never understood macro counting or calorie deficit. Yeah. And, uh, it all came to like maybe 2019 when uh, I decided to move to Japan. I messaged you, yep. and uh, you sent me so much information. You broke it down so well, and I understood everything. And bear in mind, <laughs> I, I'm like I'm, I'm I'm on the spectrum of autism. I have ADHD, and uh, I I'm terrible at reading. I can't read. Yeah. I, have, I have somebody else read my contracts because I <laughs> physically struggle yeah. reading. So then from there, I'm like. I saw my body change. So Pain. This yeah, one's gonna really look directly at me. Camera's fighting my face all over again. No tricks of the trade, the rest of the position as well. Everyone's gonna see now. Is when I wear my shorts, I only shave this part of my leg. So the rest of the leg is all hairy. I was always always setting my world right now. Kind of fairly short all over, but yeah. Well, Just to that that change. You got you got to 2018, 2019. What what was the the bit you said right? I've I've got this successful to this point. Was it like I need to get in better shape to take it my career to the next level, or or something different? It was, sort of change it was two things. It was my body was breaking down quite a lot, and I realised that I wasn't my body hadn't had the right muscle protecting it. Uh, so I I wanted to protect my body for longevity reasons. And uh, in 2019, Kenny. Cody and the Bucks all started all elite wrestling yeah. and it left a huge gap in the market and uh, I guess I was pulled to one side and asked to be uh, to step up in that guy's yeah. role me and uh, Jay White and I, I wanted to take it seriously and at the time I was a junior heavyweight but they they mixed me in with the heavyweights yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously there's two weight classes in New Japan there's juniors and there's heavies yeah uh, to be a heavyweight you need to be 100 kilograms uh, and I, I guess they was mixing me in in the open weight class, and then finally I think they saw I was putting in the work. I was uh, committed to New Japan so much to the point where I actually moved out to Japan yeah. 
I lived out there for two years and I think it was just to the point where they saw me naturally progress more and more and more. So then I think they said, all right, you know what, let's make him a bona fide heavyweight. And yeah, because yeah. your you, you career, you know, you, you, I mean, you had this fantastic career before then, but when, once you hit that 100 kg, because I remember you messaging me and saying, oh, yes, I need to be, I need to be 100 kg or more because that's going to make me a legit heavyweight. So we put in place the plan, the diet, the training and everything like that. And you, you worked your socks off, you really did. You know, you, you, you put on the size, you, you committed to the diet and the training. But then once you hit that sort of heavyweight um, bracket or heavyweight division, you know, I think that your career probably even took off even further and, and you, you know, you were putting huge matches top of the card and, and, and uh, it, you know, it's just one of those things It was just, I think that, that you showing them, or well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put in all the effort for you, they put all their stock into you and it's, you know, it's definitely paid off. Oh, 100%, I can't fault it. I can definitely tell, like, there is, there is a difference between being a junior, the junior style was a, a lot more of a fast-paced style. Well, the heavyweight well, you, had that, you had that super famous match with Ricochet that, that blew up the internet. <laughs> Still to this day, I don't understand why that happened. To this day, I don't understand why it happened. It just did. We did that match so many times. I even think you was on a show yeah, while I was I've, doing I've that I've seen you do. I've been on the show and watched you do that yeah. whilst going, yeah, I can't years, do any of that stuff. Years, <laughs> but like, I would do it all the time. And then when that happened in 2016, I, I just didn't. I, do I think it was just that, it. That, that comment from Vader just... Then that just spot, and it was like a snowball effect. And I think it's because so, so many we had people for it, people against it, and everyone had an opinion on it. And when everyone's got an opinion on it, it becomes a talking point. Absolutely. So this is why I kind of I, I think we got put into a, a spotlight, and from there I guess we just uh, we've gone on our separate journeys. We still kept as a uh, real good friends though, but it, it's just real cool to see how well he's doing. Oh well yeah, he's doing. Good. I mean, both of you, you know, you've gone on to even bigger things from that, that match and stuff like that. And obviously he's gone off to the States and been on WrestleManias and stuff like that. You've been Wrestle Kingdom, which is obviously coming up shortly as well. Yeah, Main event. Know. So we're looking for, imagine you've got your hands in the pockets. Yeah. That's what you want to feel the contraction. Put it up there. checklist on my phone it says uh, things I must do before I sell my soul to <laughs> and uh, right at the top there is main event the Tokyo Dome and for the I literally get to say now for the first time a British person is going to main event the Tokyo Dome it wasn't a dynamite kid it wasn't William Regal or it wasn't a British Bulldog it's this little <laughs> so, you know I mean? so uh, I'm, I'm blown away I'm so humble and like I've got to give everything I've got to give so that's why I dropped you another yeah. message and I said, oh, God, you've got to get, get, get in tip-top shape. So yep. who do you think you're going to be facing? Is it going to be, no, it was Shingo, Takagi, is that how you say Takagi. it? Takagi. Takagi. Or is it going to be Kazuchika Okada? Kazuchika Okada. So who do you think is coming out of the match the day before? It is hard because uh, in, in bracketology-wise, it's uh, Shingo has always beaten Okada. I've always beaten Shingo. Okada's always beaten me. So there is the, the question of like, <laughs> I don't know who's going to come through. Logistically speaking, it would probably be Shingo going through. Yeah. But there's always that part, like, Okada, there's not many guys... Because Okada's be... been the, the, the standard bearer for the last sort of five years, hasn't he? Yeah. He took over from Tanahashi. Tanahashi. Indeed, he did. Uh, you like, know, and he has been 
without you know the calling the face. He's been the man, hasn't he? He's yeah. And uh, it's, it's been cool learning underneath his tree, but unfortunately, I, I've got bigger fish to fry, and I want to be the standard bearer. And I've got uh, I've been told all my life that oh, I've got to fill in these shoes, and I ain't got to do anybody's shoes now. This is this is my time to shine, and I'm coming back to Japan. I've come back with a lot of vengeance on my mind. I've got a lot of anger, and I'm ready to take on the world with both hands up. And you're going to be in the, in the best shape of your life when we finish with you the next six yep. weeks or so. I'm, well, I'm so. like generally worried if like if we're flipping this coin and if you've got this, I'm, I'm terrified. Don't worry, we're not going to go. We're not. If I win the coin toss, we're not going to go too crazy. So, let's just talk a little bit about the gym and stuff. So, obviously, you, you've been you've been training, putting on a size. What do you like training? What's your favourite sort of body? You know, and this is just real gym bro talk. What's your favourite body part to to train and stuff like that? I've I've always liked doing back just because I think um, I I don't know. There's something just nice doing just like the deadlifts and just, yeah. that's that man quality of just like picking stuff up. Big heavy lifts from the yeah. floor and stuff. But like, like I I have to say I, I do love doing a chest day just because I I've always wanted just those big man hands, <laughs> but it's like I think. Honestly, I'm not even joking. I think of years of Japan just chopping the yeah. S out of me. And just like, I don't know if it's just like, I've got maybe like some tearage or something like that, but I've always struggled to put like some mass on my on my chest wise. But like, I've started seeing a lot of the changes, but uh, back is my favorite one, yeah. I must say. Cool. And sort of anything like, and this is real gym speaking, we'll just get through it quickly. Favorite, you know, you mentioned the deadlifts. Anything else that you really like as a, as an exercise when you're in the gym for or anything. back yeah, or, or any, anything in general just uh i, I just love cable crossover i don't know why i just i just think that's just like when i used to watch like the gym adverts that's, that is the, that that is is the typical the, like you open the magazine uh, and yeah, there's a, there's a it's that yeah. guy there and he's just there and you'd look at it he's like yeah i know i look good and i'm just like yeah you do like, <laughs> that's my okay favorite cool one. that's that's the that's the that's the gym bro stuff out of the way so In January, Wrestle Kingdom, you know, hopefully you're going to be, you know, the undisputed IWGP heavyweight champion from that. What are your goals for 2022 or beyond? What's what's the? Is there any plans? Is there anything that you want to achieve? I mean, obviously the main the main thing is walking out with those championships and just. Um, I, I would love to get the United Empire, which is my faction yeah. that uh, I started with Okan and Jeff Cobb. That I would love to just create. I've wrestled most of it. I've wrestled most of them. So yeah. I've wrestled you. I've wrestled O'Khan. I've wrestled Aussie Open. I just need to get Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb, Hanare, and Hino, TJP yeah. are the, the other ones. But like, I really like. Honestly, my main passion right now is just to try and get back to Japan. Hopefully, things get back the way they are. I mean, yeah. things have opened up a little bit more. America's a lot easier in England. There's a travel yeah. thing over there. I just saw a little thing saying New Zealand are going to be allowing visitors coming back soon, which is amazing. Yeah. And uh, Japan, hopefully, are doing this three-day quarantine. I could do three days. 14 yeah. days is tough. Uh, yeah. Three days is a lot easier. So hopefully I can go back to Japan. And I just want to I want to put in the best body of work I physically can just because I feel like I owe it to so many people after I got hurt back in May. Yeah. And uh, I had to... They would say forfeit. I didn't forfeit anything. I needed four months off and they yeah. just didn't give it to me. So just... <laughs> Good. Little key versus count. Absolutely perfect. Oh. Oh. Good. 
seven, eight, nine, half one, four, So do you think you're about to come into your, your prime of your career now? Do you think that with the size that you've put on in the last couple of years, you know, moving up, you know, establishing yourself as the, you know, the number one heavyweight in Japan, in, in New Japan, do you think that now this is the time, this is the, you know, for lack of a better phrase, the Will Ospreay era? Uh, from New Japan, I, would, I would like to think so just because and this is just me and I always joke about it but like right now it's just I feel like in the 21st century there are not many wrestlers that can compete on the level that I can compete at in ring wise I'm very good at doing those long matches my endurance is a lot better than a lot of wrestlers out there and I've always been able to push through and push through especially when I had my injury back in May uh, in, in any other sport, it would have been game over to yeah. stop the match. I carried on for another 20 minutes. I kept pushing through, and I actually won that match. It was just a week after I had to finish <laughs> it. It was, I just, I, I'm ready more than ever. I just think no one can touch me right now. See much worse. He's a liar. He's really losing his phone. You know, if you're a guest, nobody's going to lie to you and say it's easy. It's not. Oh my lord. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we've probably known each other, oh god, maybe even like eight, nine years now. And the difference in you from the hyperactive kid that was bouncing around the dressing room weighing about six stones soaking wet. To the <laughs> still have it. <laughs> well, you still bounce around the room. You're just a lot bigger now. But no, the the difference in you and, and you know, not saying I, you know, I've done some things in wrestling. They've been pretty cool. I've not had the success that you've had. But you you were always respectful when you were coming up. You always asked for my opinion. You always came to me and said, oh, what could I do better and stuff like that. And I think that you know, one of the things I said to you is. At some point, you're going to need to slow down and get a bit bigger. Yeah. And eventually, it sunk in, and then you grew. After like seven years, <laughs> seven I'm not years. saying I, I'm taking any credit for Will's career, but I did tell him at about 22 or 23 that he, at some point, he needs to get a bit bigger because that'll be the, the I, making of him. I even stuff. think I remember talking to you back in 2016. Yeah, and I did actually say to you, I would like to get off, like to have a better body because I was going to New Japan. Yeah. I just, I think it was just my um, maybe ignorance is a lot a better word, but just like. Oh, I already made it, I don't need to listen, like in a weird way, but it was only when I started seeing my body break down, yeah. it was kind of one, of, and plus when you sent me a load of things to read, I, I, I get, it's super embarrassing for me, it's really an embarrassing topic, I don't, like, I never did yeah. well in school because I couldn't read very well, and it was only afterwards, it was only in 2019 I found out I had ADHD, yeah. which is like kind of one of those things where you go, oh, that's the reason why I've messed up here, here, and here. Yeah, so you can put down a lot of, lot of things, you can look back and say, well, yeah, that makes sense why, why that happened and why yeah. that happened and why that but happened. But like, honestly, like I can't say enough, back in 2019, I think a lot of people saw my body change yeah. before them and it's because I, I reached out to you and you broke it down so well to the point where it was so easy to understand. And that's what, you know, and, and not talking about, not taking this to, to talk about myself too much, but when I am coaching people, I want to make it as easy for people to understand because you pick up a packet of, you know, 
pick a plate of rice, what the hell is in this? What do I need of this? Yeah. How much of it? And, and if you can just break it down simply for someone, anyone can get in shape. You obviously put in the hard work, you stuck to the diet and everything like that, and the results show for themselves. But it is just a case of, if I can make it as simple as possible, and then anyone, anyone can pick it up, anyone can follow it, as long as you put in the hard work and you do the work, Anyone can achieve, you know, and you, you're t- you probably what did you go from? Like, like, was it about 82, 83 up to 102 or something so like that? When I messaged you, I was 85. 85 that's right, and, 85. Uh, okay, so then when I officially was a heavyweight, I made, which is 2020, February 14th, I was 102 kilograms. So that's you know that's like 17 kg, yeah. and that, yeah. you don't put on that kind you don't put on that kind of size without putting in the hard work it and putting hard. in the effort and stuff it like that. It was so hard, especially the eating side of things. You would force yourself to yeah. eat. And just well, that's that's like you know, and again like this year for me, the previous year, I did a bodybuilding competition. I wasn't overly happy with how I looked. I said I'm going to spend the whole year because I knew it'd be locked down. There'd be no wrestling. And I basically put on three stone in a year, so 44, 44 pounds. So oh yeah. My yeah, went from 212, on, and I was 212, so I was down at almost 205, you know, cruiserweight level, 212 on stage, and then when I stepped on stage this year, I was 256. That's real heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm barely making heavyweight brackets. You've just annihilated it. Cool, right then, Will. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week when my guest will be none other than Mark Haskins.